Chantelle Martin. She's best known as the artist who literally draws on everything. From being featured in the New York Times for covering her own bedroom walls in her artwork, to drawing across city blocks, to doing what she calls liveography artwork at concerts, she's a master in her craft, and the world is truly her canvas. Please join me in welcoming Chantelle Martin to the stage. Thank you. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Put it on your back. Put it on your back. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Pick up, pick up, pick up. So I popped in last night to see the stage. And to put my mind at rest, they said, you'll only be speaking to 14,000 people. I said, thank you. Have you ever wondered why at creative conferences we don't present in creative ways? In creative conferences, why do we result sometimes to the linear way of thinking? Click, 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 next, 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 next. You all know we don't think like that as creative people, so why do we do that when we're on stage? And so today's theme, today's message for everyone is inspiration. And so within that spirit, I thought I'll mix it up a little bit today. So I have some fancy flashcards in my pocket, and I'm going to shuffle these. So there's a bit of a gamble here. OK, so I'm going to shuffle these uh, flashcards, and then we'll see what we've got. OK, so the first one is identity. That's a big one to start with. So identity, I'm going to tell you a little bit of story about where I'm from. I went home to visit my sisters one day, and I'm from a lovely place called Thamesmead in southeast London. Beautiful place. It's been in movies like Clockwork Orange and Misfits and things like that. And uh, I, I went to see my family, and I, and I was walking in the house, and I heard one of my sister's friends say, Lisa, 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 Lisa. A black girl just went in your house. And we were both like, where? <laughs> and that moment taught me that the way that we see ourselves as a family was very different from the way that the outside world saw me. I have a different dad to my brothers and sisters, so they're all blonde and blue-eyed, and I'm tanned with an afro. And uh, it, it was an interesting observation of how we bring that baggage to people. Because we saw each other as family versus black or white or anything in between. When to stop? As an artist, I get asked this question all the time. Chantelle, when you're creating, Chantelle, when you're drawing, Chantelle, when you're making, how do you know when to stop? And I've learned to describe this feeling like this. So imagine there's this feeling called stop that's in the tip of your toes. And that feeling is in the form of a line, or it's in the form of a rope, or it's in the form of the ink that I draw with. And now you imagine when you're drawing and drawing and drawing, you're pulling that rope out, you're pulling that ink out, you're pulling that line out. And when it's all out, you feel this sense of relief and the work works. And you've all probably had that experience where it feels like it works, but your brain tells you to keep going, so you keep going, and after it doesn't feel right. And so you have to listen to yourself. You have to learn when to stop. OK, let's keep shuffling these. OK, this year. Actually, this year was a big year for me. I started off the year with a collaboration with the New York City Ballet at Lincoln Center. No big deal, either. And, uh, and I started this project by interviewing 20 dancers from the New York City Ballet and asking them what makes them tick. And then from that, I created a big installation at Lincoln Center. So it was kind of an amazing feeling to walk past Lincoln Center and see your handwriting and your work 50 foot high. Also, another recent project I worked on was on Governor's Island, that little island south of Manhattan. And I created a space for poetry and contemplation. And it's called the May Room. And when you walk into the May Room, there's lots of Mays. May you be strong. May you be wise. May we save trees. 
May you find wisdom. May you sleep soundly at night. And it felt important to create a space that was calm and for peace and for poetry. So we can throw that one away. Okay, the next one. Can you draw? Can you draw? Okay, let me ask you all this question. If you can draw, put your hand up. All right, we've got about 20% there. So for the 80% of you that didn't put your hand up, let me ask you this question. How can you not do something as an adult that you could do as a two-year-old, as a three-year-old, as a four-year-old, as a five-year-old, as a maybe even a six, seven, eight, nine-year-old? Of course you can draw. It's just that somewhere along the way, you learned that you can't and somebody else can. Perhaps you can't and your sibling or your friend, they draw that house and that dog and it looks like the teacher's house or the parent's house. And then that's when you look over and you believe that they can and you can't. So let me ask you again. If you can draw, put your hand up. Improvement. <laughs> Improvement. If anything today, there's progress right there. You can all leave happy. Okay, being an artist. Being an artist. This is an interesting one. You hear quite often, you know, they're taking art out of schools. They're taking art out of schools. Of course they're taking art out of schools because we don't support our artists. We don't support our artists. It's such an absurd career path. If, when people ask me, Chantelle, you know, what would, advice would you give me? What advice would you give me to be an artist? And my advice is don't do it. Don't do it. Because people don't support you. Imagine that you're a startup. Okay, you need a five year plan, a fancy lawyer, a fancy office, some startup funds. You need this, you need that, you need this. And now imagine you're an artist. We say good luck. And then if you succeed, we call you a sellout. Don't be an artist. <laughs> okay, the next one is actually my name, Chantel Martin. This is quite smart. My name does have the word art in it, so I'm doing what I was born to do. <laughs> All right, New York. I live in New York. Well, technically, I live in Jersey City, but I'm just going to say I live in New York. <laughs> so New York is this incredible place. And I moved to New York, and I moved there from Tokyo. And I thought New York would have everything. But when I got there, when I got there after creating this career for myself in Japan, I realized that if nobody knows who you are, they don't care who you are. I got to New York, and everyone was an artist. And if nobody knows who you are, they don't care who you are. So if that's the case, what do you do? You have to make people care for you by caring for yourself first. Okay, let's keep this exciting. I'm going to keep shuffling these. You're having fun? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, London. As you can tell, I might be from London. I've not lived there in a long time, so I, I, I forget about that. So London is this little place over there in Europe, and it's where I'm from. I'm from uh, an interesting part of Southeast London, and as I mentioned, a place called Thamesmead. And London was a place where I grew up, and I grew up angry. And perhaps like some of you in this room, when you're a little bit different, when you're a little bit of an outsider, when there's something about you that doesn't fit in, you become an outsider. But what you're given is a passport. You're given a passport not to fit in. And in London, I got that first passport. I didn't look like anyone around me, and therefore I didn't have that pressure to fit in. So I was able to go out and explore the world, and I thank London for that. Okay, let's shuffle these again. Why? Okay, let's think about this. Why are you here today? Why are your feet on the floor? 
Why did you walk through that door? Why are you listening anymore? Why are you thinking? Why are you being? Why are you feeling? So I want you all just to take a minute. You're probably thinking about things. You're all in your phones. You're all in your heads, emails, business, other things going on outside of this room. But let's just take a little second. What does your feet feel like? What do your feet feel like on the floor? What does your bum feel like in that seat? Let's get in your body a little bit. Let's train that feeling, not thinking. Often people ask me, Chantelle, you know, how do you decide what to do? How do you figure out what jobs to do and not to do? And I simply say, you say yes to yes and no to no. You say yes to yes and you say no to no. But how do you get there? You get by, by feeling. So that, if anything, that's another thing I want you to feel today. Just take a moment, get out of your body, and feel what you feel like in your seat. Okay. I'll pick these up after, I promise. <laughs> okay. Who are you? Who are you? For about 10 years, I've been carrying these stickers around in my pockets. And some of them say, who are you? Some of them say, are you you? Some of them say, you are you? But I'm going to ask you all another question. Because I'm obsessed with this question. Because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter how smart you are, how traveled you are, how educated you are. When I ask you this question of who are you, at the core, without saying what you do, where you're from, or the roles that you play in your life, how would you answer? So just imagine that we're planting a seed now in the back of your head. Who are you? And it's your job to answer without saying what you do, where you're from, or the roles that you play in life. Mother, father, businessman, doctor, sister, how would you answer? Think about it. And there's a sense within the work that I'm creating that understands that when we can start to understand and answer that question and find the vocabulary and the words to ask that question, the world will be a better place. And to give you more of a practical way of answering that, so we have, who are you? And when if we subtract some of those words away, we're left with W-A-Y, way. So now we can think about this in a more practical way, in a less bigger existential question. How are you finding your way in life? How are you finding your way in life? I'm finding my way in life through this language of drawing, and words, and lines, and characters. So what are you doing? OK, that's that one out. Collaboration. I'm a big fan of collaborating. I collaborate with friends. I collaborate with brands. I collaborate with institutions. I collaborate with schools. But sometimes there's a bit of risk that comes with collaborations, especially when you work with companies and institutions. Often they'll come to me and say, Chantal, we love your work. We want to collaborate with you. And it might be a brand or an institution or a company that you're interested in working with. And then they give you a contract that takes away all your rights and all your ownership forever and ever in any medium known now or not known now forever and ever. But we want to collaborate with you because we love your work. Do you want to sign this? It's just a standard agreement. No. If you want to collaborate with artists, if you want to support artists, if you want to keep art in school, support the artists by creating better agreements and contracts and not trying to win all the time.
A contract is there to protect you, but we as the artists, as the individual, take the bigger risk. Your companies could bankrupt us 50, 100 times over and over and over. So we take that bigger risk. So respect that risk and reflect it in your collaborations, in your contracts, in your agreements, in your excitement to work with those artists. Next one is Tokyo. I lived in Tokyo for five years. It used to be a party trick now that I can speak Japanese, but uh, it has no use really for me now. But um, Tokyo is a, is a very special place for me. It's where I started my career. So I went to this school in London called Central St. Martins. Has anyone heard of it? A couple of people, yeah. It's one of those big, fancy schools with this really big reputation that doesn't teach you anything. <laughs> and then you graduate with a first-class honors, top of your year, and you realize it's all nepotism. And you'll never get a job doing art in London, so you leave and you go to Tokyo. And when you get to Tokyo, when you get to Japan, it's a really magical place. There's this sense of mastery and craft. And not everyone seems like they're in a rush to learn something and to learn everything. It's almost the opposite. It almost feels like they're there to learn one thing and to take that thing as far as they can. And so it was in Tokyo where I considered or where I wondered or where I thought about what's one thing that I could master in my lifetime. OK, everyone can draw a line. But what if that line becomes recognizably mine? What if I work so hard at this line that when you see it, you say, that's Chantel's line? But how did I get there? I got there by performing. So in Japan, I started my career by being a VJ, a visual jockey. So imagine you have a band playing. I'm at the back with an overhead projector, remember those, or a visual presenter. And I'm drawing here. And imagine that drawing is projected onto the screen, and the screen is behind the band. And then imagine the band starts playing, and the music sounds like this. Because it's a Japanese noise band, of course. And you say, whoa, I don't know what this is. And you freeze and the screen freezes. And people don't wait around for you, so you realize that you can't freeze. You just have to create. You just have to make. You just have to go. And then you realize that you don't have time to think. You don't have time to plan. You don't have time to hesitate. You don't have time to be insecure. But more importantly, you don't have time to be anybody else but yourself. More importantly, you don't have any time to be anybody else but yourself. And now imagine you, you repeat that, you repeat that, you repeat that, you repeat that, you repeat that. You extract that. And then when someone asks you, Chantel, how did you find your style? Where did you discover it? You say, no, I didn't discover it. I didn't go out into the world. I extracted it. Your fingerprint, your identity, your style is already within you. And the way that you get it out is by taking time away. Tokyo. <laughs> Gifts. OK, I was thinking about this today. Uh, you know, I, I love markers. I've got a pen in my pocket. But I have to look at this pen and thank this pen. If you want to be a creative or an artist, like I said, it's a stupid career, don't do it, unless you come from a very privileged path. But you have to think that this pen or markers or pencils are incredible. And you know why they are? It's because they're accessible. So if your gift is in the form of art or creating or making, you can discover it. You can find it because we have access to these tools. And I often wonder, what if my gift was something else, like marine biology? How would I have discovered it? I probably wouldn't have. 
Because where I'm from, people don't imagine futures for you unless you imagine them for yourself. And how can you imagine them for yourself if there's no access to them? So let's just look at this pen and say, thank you, pen. Thank you for taking me around the world, for meeting incredible people, for allowing me to collaborate, for allowing me to share, for allowing me to make, allowing me to create gifts. Okay, the next one's blank, which means my mind went blank. And I have absolutely no idea what to say now. No, that's, I put one in there just for fun. So just to finish up, how are you finding your way in life? How are you finding your way in life? Who are you? Thank you.